Good evening folks, uh, I've got a retro-ish uh, type of teardown for you uh, this evening and it's this uh, Micronta uh, battery tester and Micronta, uh, if you're unaware, was uh, a brand owned by uh, Radio Shack and Tandy uh, back in the day, um, up until this uh, early 90s I, th I think um, and the box actually tells us, um, custom manufactured in Korea for Radio Shack, a division of Tandy Corporation. Now we used to have Tandy in the UK, um, and obviously America had Radio Shack, but I was always under the impression that, that Radio Shack was the, the parent company. Um, but yeah, no, it, it appears that Tandy Corporation was. Um, but yeah, we had Tandy here in the UK, uh, and for those of you that are uh, too young to, to remember Tandy, they were a, an electronics uh, type shop that sold components and leads and basically um like Maplin but more niche more uh tended to be smaller shops than than Maplin's uh, and more reasonably priced as I remember um yeah and I spent many of my childhood days uh wandering around Tandy buying little bits and pieces uh, in fact I think my first electronics kit came from there if I remember correctly um, anyway, yeah, so this is, uh, let's say it's a battery tester, <clears throat> and before we go any, any further, um, I'll talk about the differences between uh, a battery tester and uh, a digital multimeter. Uh, so, um, if you take a nice fresh battery and measure it with a digital multimeter, or an analog multimeter for that, for that matter, it, it will show, you know, if it's a, for instance, a AA battery, it will show 1.5 volts, or around, around there. Um, if you take an old battery that's been lying around for, for some time, um, the chances are it will still read um, around the 1.5 volt uh, mark. Um, but that's a kind of false reading, because you might be inclined to think, well, it's reading 1.5 or 1.3 volts or something like that. That's still a usable battery, but it's not, because it's just purely measuring the voltage. So the difference between a battery tester and a multimeter is that the battery tester will actually place the battery under load and the, the dial or the, the you know the meter that's on there um, will, will reference that to the load that the battery's been placed under uh, and give you a, a real sort of life, right, that battery's under load and the voltage is acceptable under that load. Um, so yeah, that was just to get that out of the way. So um, you could... Um, you can use a digital multimeter, uh, obviously couple the battery with a, a resistor depending on the voltage and, and you could work out if it's a good battery or not using a multimeter. <clears throat> but it's uh, obviously a lot easier to use a battery tester. So um, we'll have a look around the box before we go any further. Um, for any popular flashlight and electronics battery from 1.2 to 22.5 volts, um, if anybody's ever come across a 22 and a half volt battery please leave uh, a little note in the comments and tell me where uh, where you've seen one because i'm interested to hear that uh, it tests batteries under actual load conditions like i was just saying um, and special settings for button and lithium batteries easy to read battery condition indicator scale and that's pretty much uh, that's on the box all that's on the box so let's uh, go ahead and have a look at it um, Okay, dokes. So it's a. Uh, it doesn't look like it's actually been used. I mean, it probably has been used, but it's it's still got the the original cable tie, etc. And there is absolutely zero marks on here. It's in really nice condition. Um, let's say made in Korea. Um, it's clearly a, a cheap, you know, cheap uh, unit. But that said, it's actually fairly well finished. Um, and if I give it a little twist. You know, there's no flex in it. It's quite fairly solid. Um, and as you can see, the uh, needle is pretty much bang on the zero. Uh, and of course, it's not doesn't need to be perfectly accurate. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. If it fits in good, you know, it's it's good. You know, it does exactly what it says in the tin. Um, yeah, not sure what the, the little yellow bit. Maybe it's, well, not sure. But uh, yeah because you'd expect that in the uh, button cell. So it's got uh, two uh, set of scales, one for regular type batteries and one for button cells. Uh, two jewels, excellent. So looking at the actual uh, unit itself, um, we've got um, a rotary type switch uh, 
one and a half uh, volts, one for button types, and so there's a one milliamp load for button cells, um, and uh, 150 milliamp for you know like double A's, C's, etc. Uh, one million, <coughs> excuse me, one milliamp load for uh, three volt lithiums, and then just uh, it doesn't actually tell us what the load is, but six, nine, twelve, fifteen, and twenty two and a half volts. Um, the leads themselves are purely just, uh, you know, little, fairly thin flex with uh, just two little probes at the end. Um, and there is a separate um, a negative sort of contact, if you like, there, uh, presumably to make it easier for us to test, um, you know, cells when they're not in, uh, you know, a, not that you would want really test it when it was inside something, but, you know... Um, you can actually te test cells only using one lead by holding um, the the uh, battery on and then touching the positive terminal with the, the red lead. Uh, what else in the box? I haven't even opened this. Uh, we've got our instructions. Oh, and a lithium battery. Saves me getting one out. Um, okay, so yeah, battery test the owner manual. Um, specifications. Yeah, the unmapped scales are all at 10 milliamp um, yeah and like it says to use the the battery tester yeah touch the probes onto the battery um, for convenience and checking batteries you can position the negative side of the battery against the post and touch the red probe to the terminal okay dokes so yeah so don't know don't know why kind of really belt and braces i suppose um but yeah i don't i don't see the how that's more difficult than you know that <laughs> anyway so we've got the instructions there uh, and we've got a little schematic it shows uh resistors um uh, sorry various resistors uh, depending on what setting it's on um there we go radio shack uh usa fort worth texas and there we go the uk headquarters bilson's road win winsbury Wednesbury, I can't even say that, West Midlands, Britain's in Korea. Awesome. So, um, I suppose we might as well try this lithium battery that was lying in the box. Um, so, we're just going to put that to the 3 volt setting. So, I'll just focus that. There we go. And uh, we'll put the positive on the positive, obviously. And then touch the negative. And we can see that's went straight into green. Which is good. Um, I'll test nice, fresh um, Duracell Industrial. And that has gone straight into good there. Um, I'll try it on here as well, just to prove that that works. Yep. So yeah, as you can see, you can either test it using this or, or both both probes. And let's see, I don't see how that's uh, any more difficult than doing that. If anything, I think the probes are giving a more accurate reading because it seems to fluctuate. Because um, that's domed, so you're getting very minimal, uh, you know, surface or contact area when doing that. Anyway, I'm rambling on slightly. Uh, so th yeah, I think we'll uh, tear it open and see what's inside. So what I'm expecting is to see is uh, a, a PCB with uh, a sweeping contacts in the back of this uh, knob, and then probably just a little array of uh, resistors, depending on what uh, you know, which will just channel the current, um, depending on what uh, position the knob's in. So let's have a look inside. Just two screws uh, appears. All right, so it's a actual physical uh, rotary switch so made by Alps, as you can see there. And um, I'm not going to take it fully to pieces, but um, we can see the resistors uh, just populated around the outside of the the PCB. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, back of the um, meter, and that's pretty much it. Um, interesting uh, strain relief on um, 
on the cables, it's purely just the two cables uh, or leads coming out through a hole and then there's a little post with one of those, um, I don't know how or what the technical term is for these washers but it's like a, a one way washer that you know once you pop it onto a post there's no way you can take it off without you know physically damaging either the post or the, or the washer. Um, and we've got a little uh, screw terminal down here, a little bolt uh, on the back of the stud for the, the other negative and that just comes on the PCB and joins up um, <clears throat> excuse me, with uh, this negative lead here. Um, on this sort of vintage, well, I, before I opened this up, I thought, well, looking at the box, you're going to think, well, that's going to be late 70s, early 80s. And I wasn't far off. Uh, looking at the back here, we can see 1282. So that's probably a 12th week of 1982, or, or possibly December 1982. Um, and just looking at the back there as well, we've got... Um, 83 some weird I can't even make out what that is but uh, yeah 83 so yeah it's early 80s isn't it um, yeah so that's pretty much it quite a, a neat little unit really I suppose um, you know uh, functional and we'll, we'll do the job um, I won't use this probably ever again. Um, I purchased it at a car boot sale today uh, for two pounds, uh, so I thought it'd be interesting to tear it down and show you what's inside the battery meter, and just to let you know, you know the differences between uh, a battery meter and uh, a digital multimeter. Um, yeah, so hopefully you will have found that interesting. You might have learned something, um, and if you did enjoy it, please give me the thumbs up and. Uh, Subscribe if you wish and we'll see you again soon for another video. Thanks for watching. Take care